Hey everybody and welcome to the Plant Stock channel. Today is Sunday and as you know on Sundays I usually try to provide a golden nugget since I usually try to rest. And I thought as of late there's been a lot of talk about Beyond Meat and if it's healthy or not. And I know especially people who love meat they usually mean that the case to eat Beyond Meat is ridiculous because it's actually worse than ordinary meat. And I think that's an interesting discussion, but I feel then it's important to actually listen to what the science tells us. So that's what this video is going to be about. And the video that I'm going to show you now is a video from a site called nutritionfacts.org. And this is a science-based nonprofit organization that was founded by Michael Greger. And he has a lot of videos when it comes to plant-based food, but overall food and what food is healthy for you. And what I really love about this site is that they provide you all kinds of information. And when these people who work as a nonprofit organization, what they do is that they look at all the research from the world, basically compare it and then give us the ordinary viewer an easy video that explains it in a simple way so if you haven't seen this site before take a look at it and this is a guy that i would trust when it comes to health he's also the one who's written the world famous book how not to die and several other books actually and the proceeds for his books goes to charity so again take a look at this site and before i show you the video i would really appreciate as always an early thumbs up since it does help spread the video and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you want to get more information regarding plant-based companies and stocks like beyond meat tattoo chef the very good food company and other plant-based companies make sure to subscribe and don't forget that bell button thank you folks i truly appreciate you global meat production has skyrocketed over the last half century uh, with pork and poultry meat now exceeding 100 megatons a year, 100 million tons, and this growing demand is unsustainable. The reduction of animal products is arguably one of the most impactful ways in which individual consumers can alter their diets to positively impact individual and societal well-being. And there's a definitely growing interest in plant-based diets and meat reduction, but even just something like Meatless Mondays requires dietary change, and sadly, Neither sustainability or health approaches are likely to work with those who love their meat. But swapping in plant-based meat substitutes may help, help kind of disrupt the negativity about reducing meat, but for hardcore meat eaters, it's got to taste like it and look like it. It's interesting, the more people consume meat substitutes, the less likely they are to care that it has a similar taste, texture, appearance, or smell of meat. But to appeal to those who really need them, Right? The meatier, the better. Uh, this has certainly been accomplished with the spate of new products on the market, with all studies agreeing that they're healthier for the planet, but what about healthier for us? Comparing labels of the burgers and looking at four of the worst components of the food supply, trans fat, saturated fat, sodium, and cholesterol, the plant-based burgers win hands down when it comes to trans fat, and cholesterol. Uh, we all know trans fats is a serious potential risk factor for cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes, but it's also been recently associated with symptoms of depression, lower testosterone in men, even just uh, like 1% of calories, and dementia. Higher levels of trans fats in the blood is associated with up to 50% higher risk of developing dementia, including Alzheimer's. Uh, now that partially hydrogenated oils have been phased out of the food supply, the only major source of trans fats left will be from animal products. What's the tolerable upper daily intake level for trans fats? An upper limit was not set for trans fat by the Institute of Medicine because any incremental increase in trans fat intake increases the risk of heart disease, the number one killer of men and women, as in any intake above zero. Because trans fatty acids are unavoidable in diets that contain meat or dairy, consuming zero trans fat would require significant changes in patterns of dietary intake. Uh, one of the authors of the report from Harvard's Nutrition Department offered a memorable explanation for why the Institute of Medicine panel didn't you know, cap it at zero. We can't tell people to stop eating all meat and all dairy products. He said, well, we could tell people to become 
vegetarian, she added, and we were truly basing this only on science, we would, but it is a bit extreme. Wouldn't want scientists to base anything on science now, would we? No. But anyways, that's a big advantage. And of course, no hormones, no antibiotics, hasn't been you know, designated as probably cancer-causing by the World Health Organization, and on and on. Now, I'm not happy with the added salt, which is about a quarter of the American Heart Association's 1,500 uh, milligram uh, daily upper sodium limit, or the saturated fat, uh, thanks to added coconut oil, um, but uh, these do seem to be outliers. I mean, in the largest study, of the nutritional value of plant-based meats to date, saturated fat levels of similar products only average about 2 grams per serving, much better than the animal-based equivalent. Sodium remains a problem throughout the sector, though, like nearly any other processed food out there. How processed are these products? Well, I mean, if you look at the fiber content, for example, yes, I mean, to see any fiber in a burger, that's a good thing, but I mean, compare that to a whole food, right? If you ate the same amount of protein from yellow peas, for example, the primary plant protein in Beyond Burgers, uh, there'd be almost no saturated fat in sodium, and a whopping 20 grams of fiber. So yes, you know, processing plants in a processing plant can eliminate 90% of the fiber, but processing plants through animals eliminates 100% of the fiber. Um, so, of course, as the chair of Harvard's nutrition department put it, you know, nutrition policies and dietary guidelines should continue to emphasize a diet rich in whole plant foods, such as nuts, seeds, and legumes, or pulses, which are rich in protein and many other nutrients, uh, but require little industrial processing. But we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Not everyone can go all you know, kale and quinoa overnight. The choice on the Burger King menu isn't between this and this, right? but between this and this. And in that case, it's a no-brainer.